somebody here, you've got a heart condition. Can you please come? I want to pray for you. But don't hesitate. Don't make me beg you. Just come out. I want to pray for you. The Spirit of God told me that something around this side of the room, somebody would come with a heart condition. I need to pray for you. Thank you. If there's anybody else, please don't make me beg you to pray. I need to pray. The Lord told me to stop uh, death by praying against heart conditions. You have a heart condition. Even if that's a murmur, that's palpitations, I want to pray for you. Please come. See, you're taking a long time. I told you, don't make me beg. There's a woman with a serious condition of blood who told me that in a simple moment like this, God healed something she dealt with for many years. If you're here and your name is Bernadetta or Bernadette, please come quickly. I want to pray for you as well. I'm just saying the things that I saw this morning in prayer. You are great. You do miracles so great. Just lift your hands to heaven and just ask the Lord to heal you. I thought I'd have a worshiper up here by now. There is no one else like you. You are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else. Is Bernadetta here? There is no one else like you. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we praise your holy name you deserve the glory and the
lift your hands and connect to the healer right now. Wherever you are in this room, wherever you are watching us online, I want you to connect to the healer right now. Connect to the healer. We call him Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that heals me. The Lord that heals me. I want you to connect your faith to the healer. The one that opened the blind eyes. The one that opened the deaf ears. The one that causes the dead to come alive. I want you to connect your faith to the healer today, to the healer today, to the healer today. Healing is so simple. Receive your miracle. Receive your miracle. Receive your miracle. So for ente kibra ante fe, so until for insa kubra ante fe dios. Ask him to heal you. Ask him to touch your body. I cancel every assignment of death. I cancel every assignment of death. In the name of Jesus. Connect to the miracle. Connect to the one who is your miracle. I cancel every assignment of death. Every stroke. Every heart attack. I cancel your work. Your work, I cancel your assignment. You are the pillar that holds my life. I cancel your assignment. Let that anointing come upon your body now. Let that anointing come upon your body now. From the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Let that healing power touch you. Let that healing power touch you. Let that healing power touch you. Touch Holy Ghost. Touch Holy Ghost. Touch Holy Ghost. There he is. There he is. There he is. There he is. Touch Holy Ghost. Heal, heal. I command your I command your healing. I command your healing. Let that anointing go from the crown of your head. Yes. Let that anointing flow. I cancel the assignment of death. I cancel the assignment of hell. Healed. Healed right now from the crown of your head to the very soles of your feet. Touch not my anointed one, neither do my prophet's harm. In the name of Jesus. I command your healing now. I command your healing from the crown of your head to the very soul of your feet. In the name of Jesus. Rain, Jesus, rain. Rain, Jesus, rain. You are the King of Zion. I see the power of God coming upon three people right now. I see the anointing of Jesus. I see the anointing of the Holy Ghost falling in this place. I see the anointing of the Holy Ghost falling in this place. Let him touch you right now. Let him touch you right now. You will never be the same again. You will never be the same again. That anointing is coming upon you for nations. 
That anointing is coming upon you for the revival of nations. There he is. There he is. I see that anointing coming upon three people. I see the angel of the Lord touching your life for the revival of nations. For the revival of nations. King of Zion, King of Zion, you are the King of Zion. The king, you're the king of Zion, Zion. Zion. the king of Zion. Something is coming upon you for the revival of your nation. Something peculiar is happening in today's city. Something peculiar. Something peculiar is happening in today's meeting. It's 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 happening right now. Something unusual. I see angels. I see angels. I see one angel carrying the oil for Poland. Someone is going to Poland and there's going to be a mighty move of God. You had a dream about Poland. There's going to be a mighty... I see the anointing of God coming upon you for universities, for campuses. I see the anointing. Jesus In every situation that helps hold my life, all my cares, all my cares and burdens onto you. I roll. Let your living ones flow. Let your holy, let your holy spirit let it come and take, come and take control. Every situation that has struck my life, all my cares and all my cares. Name of Jesus, Messiah, you are our healer, Jesus, 
the great Messiah. Jesus. The true and living God. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your anointing. Thank you for your anointing. Thank you for your anointing. Thank you for your presence here. Thank you for your presence here. Just find about seven people and just give them a hug. And just welcome them into the house of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless God for what is happening in Kent, in Ireland. We pray the blessing and favor of God over Jamaica, over our different campuses, over Dubai, over Dallas. We pray the grace of God over them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Um, I will be launching, by God's grace, uh, like Malawi and South Africa, Zimbabwe, Kenya, uh, Nigeria, we're going. Uh, I'll be away for six weeks on a mission trip, and you will be left in wonderful hands to continue this message around the world, wherever our campuses are. We're preaching the same series. We're teaching on the same things. Uh, to, this is the start of a new series, Discovering Purpose, Discovering Destiny, Discovering Purpose. Amen. And just to give you the, the points in advance uh, from our teaching, we're going to look at the presence of God and the importance of God's presence. We're going to look at the importance of pain and suffering. We're going to look at promises of God or prophecies. We're going to look at preparation. We're going to look at the importance of principles, the importance of process, the price you have to pay, the place for passion, how to pursue, how to receive power, the paradigm you need. We're going to look at common pits that people fall into. Some are irrecoverable. We're going to look at the people you need in your team. We're going to look at the place. We're going to look at problems. And your obsession with problems is going to mean... Uh, you, your obsession with solving problems is the, are the stepping stones to your destiny. We're going to look at priorities. Anybody who doesn't have priorities doesn't have focus. We're going to look at patterns. Those are people who have gone before you in what you're trying to do. If you don't have a pattern, you can't perform. We're going to look at perseverance, provision, proximity, that you need to be in the proximity of your calling. That means you need to be in the right church, in the right place, with the right people. We're going to look at perspectives. We're going to look at the place for prosperity, prayer, potential, peace. My goodness, there's so many peace to go through. Uh, but the first one I want to deal with today is the importance of God's presence for the fulfillment of your assignment and your purpose. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to take my reading today from Genesis chapter 8. Verse 6 to 12. Genesis chapter 8, verse 6 to 12. And maybe while I'm away, we'll do some online sessions. Uh, Genesis 8, verse 6 to 12. Uh, let's read together. At the end, okay, let's start again. At the end, yep, and send forth a which, uh-huh, mm -hmm. 
But the dove found no. But the dove found no. Keep going. Can we read like we were alive, please? Uh, Kendrick. Kendrick. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Noah's in the ark and he releases a dove. I want to talk today about the importance of God's presence. Hallelujah. We read in the scriptures, in the book of Luke, that Jesus went into the water. And when he went into the water, the Holy Spirit descended on him like a, in, in almost in bodily form. Uh, the scripture says something very interesting. And by the way, the Bible is for practice. It's not for hearing. So anything you're taking by notes that you don't intend on putting into practice is going to be useless. The word of God is not a nice Sunday message or a sermon. It's a way of life. The, the believer's walk is a way of life. It's a way of living. We're told to meditate on the word day and night so that we can observe to do all that is in it. Amen. Then it says we will make our own way prosperous and we'll have good success. Go to Luke 10 verse 5 because there's a strange instruction. And I want you to teach me, those of you who don't know this message because I've taught it before. I want you to teach me how to do this. Okay. Luke 10 verse 5. Please go there. Really quick because of time. There's no time. Luke 10 verse 5. Okay, I'm going to read it. It says, whatever house, read it together. No, 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 no. What translation is this? Huh? No, no, no. Don't do this to me. Do NKJV, please. This is not what it says. The Amplified is adding things that aren't there. Let me get my translation in my place. Aha, uh -huh, sorry, it is right. You can, you can switch it. I thought, I thought I was missing something for a second. But whatever house you enter, first say, okay, keep going. Okay. Okay, let's read Matthew 10, 13. That's the better one. That's what I'm looking for. Matthew 10, 13. Read it for me. Matthew 10, 13. This is a better one. Matthew 10, 13. Now, this one shows you how, but Matthew 10, 13 is where I wanted to start. So I've, I've spoiled it already. I need to see what system you all are using that takes this long because I don't understand. Matthew 10, 13. Let's go from verse 12. Okay. As you enter the home, greet its occupants. If the home is worthy, let your peace rest on it. But if it is not, let your peace return to you. Did you hear that? When you enter a home as disciples... Jesus was not speaking to apostles. He was speaking to his disciples. And he said, when you enter a home, let your peace rest on it. If the house be not worthy of your peace, take it back. How do you do that? Teach me. The word of God is for practice. 
So how do you allow your peace to rest? And, and further to that, what does it look like when your peace rests? And what does it look like when you take it back? I'm asking you, teach me. Nobody? So when you come to a place, what does it mean? Does it mean you come to a house and say, peace be upon this house? And then when uh, they treated you bad, you say, come back. What does it mean? And what does it look like for your peace? Do you understand you have your peace rest upon the house? And if it be not worthy, take it back. So we religiously, you know, especially if, you, if you're from African homes, we greet each other. We see the house say, ah, peace be upon this home. And we think we've done what the word says there. And what if they treat you badly? Did you take it back? Because clearly if he said take it back, it means something has gone. Are you understanding what I'm saying? And if he said, let it, re let it return to you, it means something has to return. I I I'm, I'm kind of teaching you how to live in God's presence and also how to operate in the anointing. Are you understanding what I'm saying? This links directly with the scripture that says, Noah let out a dove. She went to and fro, but found no place to rest her feet. She had no resting place, so he took it back. I want to tell you the dove is looking for a resting place. I want to tell you that the Holy Ghost is looking for a resting place. I want to shock you even more. Ravens have also gone out looking for a resting place. But when an evil spirit leaves a person, it goes around seeking rest. That's why some of you have torment in your home because devils have found rest. You think your arguments are normal. You think you're fighting with your wife or your friend is an ordinary fight, but you don't know because of your lack of peace, the devil has found that place empty and occupied. The Bible says when the devil finds the place empty, what was the raven also looking for? The raven was also looking for a place of rest. The dove is also looking for a place of rest. The difference between when the dove finds rest and when the raven finds rest is when the raven finds rest, the raven will bring torment into your life. When the dove finds rest, you'll see the fruit of the spirit. When the raven finds rest, you'll see the work of the flesh. I want to tell you, the devil is looking for a resting place in you. I love what Bill Johnson once said. I was listening to one of his teachings. And he said, if you had a dove on your shoulder right now, you know, doves are very shy birds. They're not like these London pigeons that, in, that walk in your conversation with you, just enjoying and listening to what you're saying. These diseased rats that have wings. You always know the area you're in in the UK by the pigeons. If you're in a rundown area, those pigeons are there. And they have these broken legs. And they just... <laughs> it's always the area with the betting shops and everything. You see the pigeons just flying low. The wing whisks past your ear as you're walking. They have no fear. Pigeons are not the same as doves. Doves are very shy birds. Once a dove sees you, the dove flies. And when a dove uh, flies, the unique thing about a dove versus like other birds is you hear other birds when they fly. Doves, you don't hear them flap. That's how delicate they are. You don't know when he leaves. Doves are very shy creatures. And so it's interesting that the Bible says the Holy Spirit descended on Jesus like a dove. If you had a dove on your shoulder, how would you live? Every step you make, 
will be sensitive to the dove because you don't want the dove to leave. You don't want the dove to fly away. He said, when you enter a place, let your grace rest upon it. I want to show you another scripture, and then I'm going to uh, close because time is already gone. That's why I wanted to do some ministrations before instead of after service. Uh, time is already gone. Look at, uh, go to Exodus. Exodus. No, no, no. Let's look at Numbers. Numbers 11. Let's start from verse 16. Uh, I want to contextualize what's happened. Moses has just asked God to kill him. Because of the people. Mm -hmm. So God says to Moses in verse 16, what does he say? The Lord said to Moses, gather to me 70 men of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be the elders of the people and the officers over them, whom you know to be elders, whom you know to be mature. Because the manifestation of the Spirit is given in three dimensions. Dimension number one is the Spirit with you. Within you, sorry. Dimension number two is the Spirit with you. Dimension number three is the Spirit upon you. I want to tell you that anointing you receive that's in you abides in you forever. He will never leave. But that grace of God upon the life of an individual can leave. You'll be shocked. The Bible says that when the enemy roared, the Spirit of God came upon Samson. And he, he destroyed that lion. Right? But when Delilah started to work on Samson, Samson shook himself and did what he did. But one time he did not know the spirit had left him. Left him in what dimension? Upon the life. Because the spirit of God upon you gives you the grace to function in ministry. He gives you the grace to serve. The spirit of God upon you empowers you for work. But he did not know the spirit had left him. And he shook himself as before. But this time it didn't work. When the Spirit came upon Saul, Saul could prophesy. But then he did not know the Spirit of God had left him. And when the Spirit of God left him, what happened? An evil spirit came. Found rest with him. Are you hearing what I'm saying today? I'm talking about purpose. But the carrier of your purpose is the presence. Are you listening to me? Men of purpose are men of isolation. If you spend too much time with people, my phone, it buzzes. You people want to kill me. Text, text, text. No, no, no. Men of God are people who spend time alone with God. You don't find them wandering in the market. You don't find them doing a zonto in the streets. Do you ever see the priest of a shrine doing a zonto in a party? No, his life is lived before the shrine, 24-7, engaging with deities. You don't see them hanging out with ordinary people. Why? Because they have to spend time with God to be able to deliver. Anytime you don't spend time with someone, but you deliver a message for them, you're a fraud. Your purpose, your destiny is prophetic. And because it's prophetic, it can only be discovered in the presence. Please understand, the prophetic is not in prophesying. The prophetic is in fulfilling. You missed what I just said there. The prophetic ministry is not in prophesying. Let me tell you when the prophetic ministry has reached its fulfillment. Uh, uh, there's levels to the prophetic. Uh, uh, Pastor Nicholas arrived. Please give her a big round of applause. There's levels to the prophetic. Level, level number one of the prophetic is receiving revelation. Level number two is interpreting the revelation. Level number three is applying the revelation. Level number four is walking in the fulfillment. So what? You have a prophecy. It means nothing if it, it's not written like it was with Jesus. He did this so it might be fulfilled. What was spoken by the prophet. That's when you're prophetic. You're prophetic when you walk in fulfillment. 
And I'm here to tell you, it's impossible to walk in the fulfillment of the prophetic without being under the custody of his presence. If his presence doesn't control you, if his presence doesn't drive what you do, you will be under the operation of another spirit. The spirit of God left her and an evil spirit came to him. You'll be shocked that if you're not a resting place for God, you'll become a resting place of devils. Are you listening to me today? What happened here in our text? Let me quickly run through it. I wish I had time. Have them come to the tent of meeting and th that they may stand there with you. I will come. What did God say? I will come down and speak with you there. And I will take some of the spirit that is upon you and I will put it on them. Do you see that? I will take of the spirit that is where? And I will. And they shall bear the of the people that you may not bear it yourself alone. Keep going. Then you shall say to the people, consecrate yourselves for tomorrow. You shall eat meat uh, for tomorrow and you shall eat uh, meat for you have wept in your in the hearing of the Lord saying, who will give us meat? The Lord said, consecrate yourself. Consecration means you must live a separated life. I'm giving you secrets of God's presence. You can't be around people all the time and be anointed. People will sap the anointing from you. You'll be shocked. When you have no more strength, you'll be shocked how many ministers have become addicted to the people more than the presence. And what happens when you spend so much time with the people, like Aaron did, the people convince you and you remake God in the image of the people. Are you understanding me today? Uh, now, now, verse 25, let's skip there. It says, then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took up the spirit that was upon him, right? Are you there? Took up the spirit that was upon him. We need to change this software. It's not quick enough. And placed the same upon the 70 elders. And it happened when the spirit, when the spirit, when the spirit, when you go into a house, let your peace. If it be not worthy. When the spirit rested. Do you see that? There are people for whom the Spirit of God comes upon and he doesn't find rest. He doesn't, basically what do I mean? He comes upon you, maybe you can prophesy for about five minutes. But when you get home, he doesn't rest on you. For when he's not resting, I promise you torment will be there if God is not resting on you. One of the, one of the principles of the Spirit of God upon is the Spirit upon a pawn also deals with devils. The spirit rested upon them, and what happened? That they did what? Although they... The power to sustain certain levels of anointing is determined by your ability to abide in his presence. If you don't have a private life with God, you can't sustain the anointing more than a Sunday. If you don't have a life, I, I understand you're busy, life will thrust upon you many titles. In one season of your life, you'll be someone's brother, then you'll be someone's father, you'll have many children, then you'll be someone's husband or wife. And Paul spoke of the banalities of those who are married. He said, so if you're married now, you have no time for God. Only the cares of your spouse. Before you were married, you had sick time. You could be in God's presence 10 hours. Now you're married. The devil will even work in that marriage to make sure you're just so confused at the end of the day. You don't even look at God anymore. You're just saying, the woman you gave to, the man you gave me, it was easy till this complication happened of love and relationship. 
when you didn't have a job, you had time, you were praying, and God actually enjoyed, they were your worst years, but God enjoyed that time. You were crying, no money, no money. God finally had your attention. He had time with you. Now you have the blessing of the job that, that you prayed for. You look at God and you say, You didn't have a ministry or a church. You spent hours crying out to God for the nation. The fruit showed up. And you'll be shocked how the fruit can choke the presence. You'll be shocked how many people have uh, seek first the kingdom and all these things will be added. How many people are now, uh, re are now living life in the things that were added. And they've forgotten the thing that they sought. They bought the thing that was added. Are you, are you understanding what I'm saying today? The devil found no rest. Not everything is about your ministry, your ministry, your ministry. And the highest level of prayer is intimacy. 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 You're worried, oh God, I want to be a national prophet. You won't be a national prophet. But if you want to be God's friend, you'll be a prophet like none other. You'll know things, you won't know how you know them. Because the Bible says God shares his secrets, not with the prophets. It says, with his friends. That's why he said, touch not my anointed ones, neither do my prophets harm. Why? Because to become a prophet, you had to go through the avenue of friendship. <laughs> There's no way to become one unless you spent a lot of time with God. We find Samuel in the scripture and the Bible is honest enough to admit that he did not know God. But he's laying in the presence of God, ministering to God day and night. And one day God revealed himself to him. And Samuel was not yet familiar with the voice of God. So what was happening all the, that time? He was refusing to move until God revealed himself. Some of us have run out. We moved with small oil. We've got excited because we want to be seen as the voice of our generation. But one day we'll cross the realm of time and we'll realize that in eternity it was there that recognition mattered more than here. This world is so finite, so small. You're looking to matter and be important here. You're looking to have your way and win the argument here. Not knowing what matters most is your behavior here will echo in eternity. So he said, they prophesied and they never prophesied again. Joshua is running through the camp. God, Moses stopped the people. Everybody's prophesying. Moses said, I wish that all God's people, I wish that all God's people were prophets. I wish that all God's people were prophets. What am I saying here? It's impossible to be in the presence and not be a prophet. Because the nature of the Holy Spirit is he is called the spirit of prophecy. In fact, the sign that the Holy Spirit is upon you is not speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues is encrypted prophecies. Speaking in tongues is, is a prophecy in a form, but it's in a form that is still mysterious. The sign that you have actually been in the presence of God is that you prophesy. Prophesying is not merely, uh, thus saith the Lord, this, this, and this. Prophesying goes into how you behave. Do you understand? We're trying to teach you principles of destiny, but the problem is we're teaching you from outside. But see, when the Holy Spirit teaches, he teaches from within. The Bible says, no longer will they have to observe my law. I will write my laws in their heart. That means uh, uh, what will happen is the word we preach will profit you. The reason why you can fall asleep, I'm looking at some of your faces, you're, do, you're dr drifting off. You're drifting off because a spirit of slumber has come upon you. Because nothing is in you. Now you're awake. Yeah, I can see three of you just... <laughs> 
You're drifting off because you've got a demon of slumber inside of you because nothing is in you. Because when the Holy Ghost is on the inside of you, the Bible says the word they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in the hearts of those who heard it. That means when God is in you, a word can come from outside and cause an explosion of faith on the inside because you heard the same thing in the presence of God. What do I mean? My sheep know my voice. Why do they know his voice? Because they spend time in the same presence so when you and I come from the same place it's like we're speaking the same language because we come from the same native country called the presence it's not Christianity it's presence it's the presence of a spirit called Christ not Christianity no 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 it's not Christianity there's no such thing as Christianity it's that everybody who lives, lives under the influence of spirits. Everybody in this world lives under the influence of spirits. Whether you like it or you don't, you are under the influence of a spirit. Whether you like it or not. If the Holy Ghost is not there, a devil is there. I promise you. I promise you. If you're not full of God, there'll be devils. And they may not possess you. Maybe they won't possess you because there's some small flicker of God's presence in your life that they, that they still fear. Maybe they'll oppress you. Maybe they'll harass you. Maybe they'll be bothering you around and, and whispering to you and speaking suspicions around you. But you see, when you're full of God, the Bible says when a devil leaves a man, it wanders through dry places looking for rest finding none he says i will return to my old home finding it empty the question here is are you full of the holy ghost are you full are you full do you have a reputation that you're on fire but you're not on fire so how do we get full of the holy ghost when you enter a house let your peace rest upon you. Yeah? When I was praying earlier and people were manifesting, I was allowing my peace. The dove was looking for a resting place. There are some who can't receive. Even though others are experiencing, there are some who will be looking around like. Do you know why they'll be looking around? Because the Bible says spiritual things are foolishness to carnal people. You're just a carnal person. So the Holy Ghost is moving, but because it says, the, who is the carnal person? The mind set on the flesh. Your mind is just maybe, when, when will service finish? Uh, my dress, is it looking good? Oh, why did I wear these shoes today? I should have worn the black one instead of the red one. You're just, you're just not, you're just carnal. Who's the spiritual person? It's not when they stood in today's service, they decided to get in the spirit. They've been conditioning themselves. The spiritual person has been spending time, time, time. I want to tell you, there's a wrestle between some of you, between your purpose and his presence. There's a wrestle. There needs not be a wrestle. When you have the presence, you'll fulfill your purpose. You'll fulfill it in style. You'll fulfill it with power. What does it say in Zechariah 4 verse 6? Not by power nor by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. That means when you have his presence, there'll be an anointing on your life that causes life to bow. There'll be a favor. You know, Joseph was doing ordinary work, just the same as everybody else. Uh, but the Bible says that Potiphar took note that God was with him. Why? Because everything he did prospered. When you're a person of God's presence, you can put ant result, ant effort, and get elephant results. Why? Because the presence of God makes life easy. Without that presence, life is difficult. You become like the Egyptians. What happened to the Egyptians? God was busy resisting them while they were attacking the Israelites. How was he resisting them? The Bible says he took the wheels off of their chariots. When you don't have the presence, God will be removing wheels from you. 
You'll be running, nothing will happen. You know, people of the presence, there's an uncommon level of favor. I can't explain why I'm loved. You might hate it. But see, in time, in God's presence, you go beyond God so loved the world. You're not special. God loves everybody. When I heard that, I, I stopped feeling special. When I heard what God said about David, man after my own heart, he said these words, I like him. If Obama likes me, I might boast because he won't mess with me. I'll just call and say, this guy, he'll throw you in jail somehow through some charge. He'll get some Russia collusion and, and do you somehow. You'll be finished in no time. If, if Obama likes me, if Oprah likes me, I'll be happy. I'll call her when I have financial problems. I'll just be telling her. She said, don't worry, I wrote the check already. It's done. If God of Obama and God of Oprah, God of the universe, God of all the kings of the earth likes you, likes you, no, 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 not love. He loves everybody. But if he likes you, he likes you. How does God like you? How do you get to the point that God likes you? I'll, I'll, I'll share it with you. Uh, you need to fix the timer. It's gone back to 60 minutes. I'm grateful, though. How does God like you? How do you get to that point? We're talking about the presence. There's this amazing uh, scripture. I forget where it is. But it, it talks about uh, Jesus getting onto the disciples' boat when he saw that it was storm-tossed. And immediately he got on their boat. They arrived in their destination. There's something about when you, you're in Christ that you get into the place of your calling instantly. Instantly, there's something about the translocating power of the anointing that moves you from one place to another, collapses time frames and causes things to happen that you could not make happen in your ordinary power just because you spent time in his presence. In the, in the dealings of the presence of God, it's not the amount of time, it's more about the consistency. I don't mind if you spend 10 minutes a day I, I prefer that more in that track record of consistency than you do five hours and then the next day you don't. This is how many burn themselves. They look at the track record of people who have grace because of they built that grace over time. And you try and mimic their level of discipline that you have no grace for. And then you even discourage yourself because you set yourself up to fail. I'd prefer you were just consistent with the Lord. How do we develop this? You see, he said, when you enter a place, let your peace rest upon it. If it be not worthy, take it back. That means the presence of God is really substantive. It's really substantive. It changes lives. It changes lives. A woman came up to me. She said I was due for a heart uh, valve surgery. She has something like an extra valve that shouldn't be there that's causing her some problems. And she was supposed to die if she doesn't get this surgery. I said, but you called out my name and my condition online. So when you called out my name and my condition, uh, the, I still went for the operation, but they opened me up and they could not find the valve anymore. It wasn't there. The presence has substance. There was a time we were online praying. And as we were praying, I gave a word of knowledge about somebody in palliative care. Is that right, Deacon Christine? Someone in palliative care gave a word of knowledge, gave a name. Deacon Christine said, oh, that's my friend, that's my friend. She's in palliative care. Huh? Your cousin? And then you said something happened. At the time we were praying, she said a light came into the room. She was healed that moment. The presence is a real thing. A real substance. It changes things. When you have oil, it changes things. People begin to call you. 
and open doors. Someone called me just this week. They said, uh, uh, as you're going to Africa, we've just been speaking to the prime minister. This, we're opening the doors to the, the, the leaders of the nations. This leader, this leader, this leader wants to speak to you. Why? Did I ask? God likes me. And you'll have a problem if you don't like me. That, that will be your business. It will be you and God to deal with by yourself. For some reason, he... If you looked at David, you wouldn't like him. Because David was a... What he did was scandalous. But one day, Abigail is mocking him. Abigail has every right, by the way. Every right. I feel for that woman. Not Abigail, sorry. Um, Micaiah has every right. I feel for her. Because how can this man go away? I lowered him out of a window. I saved him. I saved his life from my father. And now he comes back with three new babes. Every right. That's why she was jealous. You dance like a vain man in front of women. He was, she was jealous. The women were singing. Ah, David has, Saul has killed his father. David is tens of thousands. The women. Because the anointing attracts women. Micaiah was there. Dance like a, and God shut her womb. How do you walk in the anointing? Can I give it to you in steps? Number one, isolation. You have to get alone. Not the kind of isolation you're offended with people. Some people are watching me online. They didn't come to service today because they're offended. Fool. You're a fool. The, the camera here. Put them. You're a fool. The Bible says, he that isolates himself rages against sound wisdom and seeks his own way. I'm not talking about that offense of isolation. Ah, I just feel bad. Therefore, I'm not coming to church. The worst thing you can do is that. Another level of foolishness, and this one, this one is, is, I wish you'd wake up to this. When you sin, you hide from God. That's also another foolishness. In Genesis chapter 1, Adam and Eve sinned. God said, where are you? Because he knows you're in danger so long as you're separated from him. You're in danger. You're in danger. Your life is hidden in Christ, in God. You'll start to find your identity in the wrong things if you don't stare in the face of God. Are you understanding what I'm saying today? He said, where are you? Because, because you were made in his image. He wasn't made in yours. So to become who you're meant to be, you have to look at God all the time. Because it's in his, in his image you were made. You can't discover yourself in your friends. You can't. You can't discover yourself in your career. Mom, you can't discover yourself in your children. Wife, you cannot discover yourself in your husband. You discover yourself in the presence of God. You have to develop God esteem. So no foolish man, ladies, can tell you I love you and you drop your skirt. No, no, no. You have too much confidence. That I love you fed something that your dad never said he loved you. And now because one man just uses some words together, he doesn't even use them nice. He's got one gold tooth standing there. He's got a hand in his, in his pants. He's got, he's sagging. I'm not against your gold teeth. Keep your gold teeth. I'm just talking about, he's got one long fingernail. That was a what? That in itself was the warning sign that you should have run away a long time ago. You saw this one long finger. Pants are here. One hand is in his pants. When you've been in the presence of God, it doesn't matter how many years you've been waiting for that husband. God will send him at the right time. 
at the right time you'll be in God's presence you're just talking to the Lord about him and the Lord is talking to you about him as well and then God starts telling you that I called you say to Rwanda go and preach in Rwanda you've never been to Rwanda but you open the door you start preaching while you're preaching there's this handsome guy on the front row staring at you you swear you've seen him before you saw him in a time of prayer he came up to you and he said hello my name is James you said hi James how did you meet him you met him on the road called obedience you must love being alone 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 pastors we can't always spend time with our people in prayer I can't do prayer call every day no 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 I need I need to be I'm in danger when I'm not alone Wise, if you want to protect your husband as the men of God in your house, watch if he's alone with God. If he's not alone, he's in danger. And if he's in danger, you're in danger. He must, you must guard his time alone. In fact, don't fight him. If you want him to change, just play music in the room and put a Bible there and his notepad. Just lead him to the only one who can really correct him and deal with him and change him. The more he spends time with God, the safer it is for you and the entire household. If he's supposed to be the head of your home, if the head doesn't speak to his head. I'm telling you secret number one. Let that be alone with God. Be alone. Be alone. My time is up. So I'm going to rush it. In the aloneness with God, in the aloneness, uh, you can play for me, please, sir. In the aloneness with God, uh, uh, um, one of the highest practices, if you want to be prophetic, is meditation. You must be a person of meditation. Before I came into the service, I was in the side room. When I was in the side room, uh, God showed me heart condition, and then he showed me Bernadetta. And he showed me a deliverance from death. See, sometimes if you're too close to people, you can't see anymore the problem. You just want to be friends with everybody. You're pally with everybody. And now your people are dying because you wanted to be their people. You have people-pleasing problems. It's not about, no, 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 ministry is not about the people. It's about the presence. The presence. The presence will bring the people. And when the presence brings the people, don't get so lost in the people. You understand it? Don't get so lost in the people. Because I promise you, the people will kill you anyway. Some of your most loyalist followers will stab you. Jesus himself was wise enough, though he raised 12, he was wise enough many times to isolate himself from his closest leaders. Sometimes people call me, text me. They just send some nice message. How are you? I don't even respond. Because my job isn't to be how are you in your life. If I can't see what's going on behind the how are you. Jesus said, have I not chosen 12 of you? And one of you is a devil. He knew. His time with God was so, so concrete. He said he trusted himself to no man. He knew what was in their heart. Only when you spend time with God can you know what's inside of people. Husbands and wives, don't be too close to each other. That your closeness to each other is more than your closeness to God. That's how something can be going on with your wife or your husband and you'll never know. Because you think intimacy is achieved. The oneness in marriage is achieved by, by being close. No, the oneness in marriage is, is achieved by being close to the one who lives inside of your husband or your wife. The more you know him, the more you'll know them. I promise you. I promise you. The more you know God, the more you'll know the hearts of men. The man of God was talking and he said, uh, uh, he's a prophet of God. A major prophet of God. He said to another prophet, please help me pray for my wife. I don't know what's going on with her. The man of God was saying, but you're a major prophet. He said, I don't know. We're too close now. I can't see anymore. 
Proximity blinds the anointing. Once familiarity sets in, you can't see anymore. If Makai was wise, she would have prayed. God would have said, hey, this man has danced. I'm so pleased with him. You, it's your personal issue. You have to be very wise. Spend time with God. He'll give you answers. I remember when I was younger, and God always reminds me of this lesson. When I was a child, my dad bought me a transforming robot. It turns into a car by itself. Then it turns into a robot. One day I did something and it broke somehow. My dad said, let me fix it. I said, no, 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 no. Let me show you. Let me show you. That's not how it works. And I snapped it. I said, let me fix it. I said, no, that's not how it works. And I snapped it again. God always reminds me of that every time I take my life back into my hands. The more you try to fix your life, the more you'll break it. Catherine Kuhlman, with all the healings and miracles she saw in her meetings, she said, the world is yet to see a man or woman whose life is completely surrendered to the Holy Spirit. She cried because hundreds of people were risen out of wheelchairs in her meetings, but two were not. And she cried, said, Jesus, if you were here, all of them would be healed. If one person was healed in our meeting, we'll create videos. The way we'll package that miracle. It's as if it's the only miracle God has ever done in his life. It would be on TikTok, Instagram, everything. We're even shocked when God gives us a word of knowledge and we get it right. Elijah was shocked that God didn't give him information. But the Lord didn't reveal this to me. It's not Christianity. It's time in his presence. And if you're not in his presence, you are in the presence of something. Don't think because you're a Christian, you're exempt from demonic oppression. That's why everywhere you go now, you become the evangelist of hell. Nobody has peace. Nobody. Every church you've been through, there's been fights. You, 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 you keep telling every new minister, it's not, it's not me, it's the church. They don't understand my anointing. They don't get who I am. No, no, when you're in the presence, God will so correct you. In love. He'll deal with your heart. And it's time spent alone. Let me give you this. It's time spent in silence more than talking. If 90% of your prayer is you talking, you're not praying. You're in a monologue of Shakespearean level. Two households, both alike in dignity. In fair Verona where we lay our scene. From ancient grudge breaks new mutiny where civil blood makes civil hands unclean. From forth the faithful loins of these two foes, a pair of star-crossed lovers take their vows. Who misadventurous piteous overthrows, but with their death that bury their parents strive. That's how your prayers are. Monologue. God, me, 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 I'm going through. I did I just, oh Lord, just how you do. Oh God, oh God. Shut up. Have you noticed things happen when he speaks? When he speaks, not when you speak. You speak and nothing happens. He speaks and light becomes. He speaks and stars are thrust into the sky. That's why Mary said, whatever he tells you to do, just do it. And don't question it. Just do it. So the objective of prayer is to hear him. We heard you. It's enough. We know. Thank you. We get it. Heartbreak. Yeah, we get it. We get it. We get it. Heaven understands now. Shush. Wait! Listen. What do I do if he doesn't speak? Wait. Wait. But I've been waiting. Up. Keep waiting. Wait. Play some music. Read your Bible. Moses spent 40 days and 40 nights waiting. But I've been waiting. If, it, if it's important to you that you've been waiting, you're not waiting. But if it's important to you that you're spending time with God, you, you have the right heart. He may not say anything at all, at all. But it will shock you that while you were there, he was filling you with water. And you'll only know when you lay hands on somebody and wine comes out. 
or you'll only know when people get delivered around you and set free. The Bible says Moses' face was shining and he didn't know. That means in 40 days he was in the presence of God. He had no clue there was change happening. Sometimes you can spend time there and not even know until you open your mouth and you start giving people advice. Then you step into word of knowledge. You're like, where did I get? How did, how did you know that's my family name? How, you just had a knowing because now you're connected to the economy of the all-knowing one. And because you're connected, I remember somebody calling me. And they, I, I was with uh, uh, Elisha. Where is he? Is he here? Tutu. I was, oh, hey. I was with him. Someone called in the car, right? And they said they, they want to give their a name to a baby or something like that. Instantly, I knew the name. He even said it as well. He knew the name. How do you know the name? I just, I don't know how. Somebody once walked up to me and I said their name before they told me. I don't know how. It's just you spend time in the omniscience of God. And you can grab from the fridge of his all-knowing knowledge. It's not that he tells you. It's that you live in his mental real estate. I've got to close. Stand to your feet. I'm done. I'm done. So you've been to service today. Well done for coming to church. Clap for yourself. Well done. That's a good thing to come to church. But a better thing is on Monday to spend time in his presence. It's good to be in the house of God. But it's better to know the God of the house. Spend time with him. It's great. It's great. I'm glad you're all here. It's wonderful. It's nice. It's nice. But it's better to know him for yourself personally. Men of God should not be gods of men. It's not our assignment to be your God. Come up to me after say, pray for me, I need a breakthrough. As if I have a special line to God. You, you're still on call waiting. Heaven is, you're still listening to heaven's music. What's, it, what's the music they always play? It's one annoying song they always play. I can't even remember it now. Three Mobile is always playing. I tell them, do not play that waiting music. Just leave me on hold. The one heavy pop song that's so annoying that it doesn't give you any kind of patience. They're just trying to chase you off the phone. Some of you think when you talk to God, it's like, oh, hi. If you're calling heaven today, please press one. If your problem is that you still need anointing for breakthrough, please press two. If you had a dream with two snakes and you don't know what it means, please press three for your profit. If you need a marriage or you need a spouse, please press four. Four. Now you are through to the Department of, of Husbands. Please press one if you're tired of waste men. Please press two. This is not how heaven works. There's no mediator anymore between you and God. I am not your mediator. I'm your intercessor. But I'm not your mediator. On that day, Jesus was on Mount Transfiguration. Elijah and Moses appeared. Elijah represented the prophet, a form of mediation. Because to hear from God in those days, you went to a prophet. Moses represented the law. Because to know God, you had to go through the law. But here, those two men who didn't fulfill their destiny met with Jesus called grace. And Jesus said, hand over to me the documents and I will form a new covenant in my blood. That from now on, I will be the only way, the truth truth and the life that no one comes to the father except by me the catholics got it wrong you don't need a priest and you don't need a pope you don't need a pulpit and you don't need a stage all you need is a contrite heart and a broken spirit all you need is a heart that says god as the deer pants for the water so pants my soul that god you're not satisfied with offerings of bulls anymore but what you want is a broken spirit such you will not despise. 
That means I can meet God. There's coming a time when neither in this temple nor on this mountain you will worship, but the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship Him. You don't need a pastor with a supreme anointing. You need Jesus with all the grace and power of God that's on the inside of Him. Connect to God. That's how people have gone astray. Emptied your whole bank account, but tricks the preachers. People have run to fields to drink petrol and eat grass because they're fools who did not know God, so they didn't know His voice. People have ended their destinies, becoming things they should not become because a prophet gave them a word, but they didn't have a God in their life who's already spoken to them. So that this prophetic voice can be a confirmation of the things the Spirit of God is really speaking to them about. No man should be able to manipulate you when you've been in God's presence. No woman should be able to manipulate you when you've been in God's presence. He said to Ezekiel, I'll make your face twice as hard as theirs. When you've been in God's presence, you become hard. Hallelujah. I'll see you in six weeks. God bless you, like London. Wow. God bless you, Apostle Toby. The book of James says that we should not deceive ourselves just being hearers of the word, but we should be doers of the word. So Heavenly Father, we pray right now that you give us the grace to fully submit to your presence, not just this week, but all the days of our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. So we've got um, time of announcements. We'll start with our offering. Offering time. So we've got a QR code on the screen, please. If you, if you don't have internet, we do have um, Wi-Fi available. It's a bit shaky, but we do also have our ushers who pass around the cards. If you, if you guys could just bear with us for two minutes while we give the announcement, those on the staircase, please bear with us for two minutes. We've got a few announcements and we'll make it quick. Um, newcomers, if you're a newcomer today, please could you stand on your feet so that we can give you a big welcome. If you're here for the first time. Wow, we've got a few. I just want you to come forward because you're going to uh, meet with Pastor Enoch. Pastor Enoch, please come. And Pastor Enoch is go just going to take you to the foyer and take your details. He's also going to put some details on our newcomers classes in our community chat. So we would like you to join and engage. So if you could just kindly make your way down and ushers, if you can help usher them to the foyer um, and they will, their details will be taken. Our second announcement is Light Kent has officially launched. It doesn't mean you should leave Light London to go to Kent, but if you have friends and family in Kent, please, this is your evangelism piece. Please share it with them. Um, go on Instagram, share the link with them, and invite them to join. They, they do need support in terms of um, volunteers and um, members as well. So please share that with your friends and family. We also have um, a video from Ignite. Is David around to um, come and present that to us? Good. Good afternoon, church. Um, so, um, Ignite. Uh, is the Ignite tribe in the house? I'll do that again. Is Ignite tribe in the house? Amen. So today, I'm um, going to announce that we have um, an all-night prayer event called Contend on Friday. If the poster's up. Um, so basically, we have a week of just prayer. We're going to go into a time of repentance, um, praying into the nation, praying into the youth. And um, yeah, this is a burden that we have just to pray into the youth to restore them back to God, but also call the lost um, as well. So this week, we really want you guys to, to sign up and um, to come. This is even for your own lives or even contending over our families, bloodlines. Um, if you want that time to build capacity to pray, um, please join us for our all-night prayer on Friday. Um, and also evangelism as well will be just before that. So on Friday, the 25th, we'll be doing evangelism from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. And then we'll be doing our all-night prayer from 11 to 5. It's a tough schedule, but the times and the seasons call for it. Um, so please do scan your... I'm not seeing phones. I'm not seeing phones. If you guys could scan and register and please join us. Um, this is open for everyone in Light London as well. Um, this is open for everyone in Light London. Do you guys want to say anything? That's it. Cool. Thank you for that. Ignite. 
And for this next announcement, I want us to really give a big shout. We've got the Africa Tour, Africa and Friday Fires Tour. So we've got that going on. And I want you, again, if you, can't, if you can make it to Africa, great. But if you can't, I really want this to be an evangelism piece. We're not just announcing it here for the sake of it. But if you have friends and family in Kenya, Malawi, South Africa, Zimbabwe, please share the link with them. Please invite them. If you know someone who needs Jesus there, please invite them. We want to see a full house of people, not just saved people, but even the unsaved, the the wounded, the broken, everybody there. Want to see God do his thing over there. So please share this on your social media. And I'm sure that um, in due time, we'll have a few more um, announcements or things around it that you can share, maybe some flyers and stuff. Um, our next announcement is Friday Fires London. So we still have our early bird tickets on and on your seat, you will find uh, some QR codes. So I want to say two things to you. We're still taking um, payments in-house. So for our members, we're doing like something very special for you. We don't, it's a double discount essentially. We don't want you to pay Eventbrite fees. And it's also um, early bird out. So um, Deaconess Christine, if you could please stand for us. Deaconess and Prophetess Amma, they'll be taking registrations outside. And we'll be signposting you to them. So if you want to buy your ticket, um, no event bright fees and uh, early bird is still on. So please, we encourage you. But these pieces are to share with your friends. Igniters, when you're going to do your evangelism, these are the QR codes. When you prophesy, you pray for people, you invite them to Friday fires. So everybody, just raise up your, your cards. Let's see if you've all got them. They're in your cups, Yeah. So you share them with friends and family. When you invite people, they scan the QR code. So we want a full house for Friday fires as well. And our last announcement is for testimonies. If you would like to give a testimony, we had some of the amazing um, testimonies today. Please email lightlondontestimonies at gmail.com. I'm not sure if it's on the screen, but we will put it in our community chat. So if you're not on the community chat, please see any of the leaders, if the leaders can stand up. We're a bit short staff today, but <laughs> if any of the leaders can stand up, please see any of the leaders and we will add you to the community chat. Um, last final thing, we just want to call up Apostle Toby and Pastor Nicola. They will be traveling um, to Ghana and Apostle Toby is going to go to Africa to do a tour and we just want to pray for you um, and as you go. Church, if we could just stretch our hands to our leaders, please. And if leaders can come and lay hands, we believe in prayer in this house. And we believe that we want to spiritually black back our leaders as they go to Ghana, as they go to Nigeria, as they go to Zimbabwe, Malawi. Um, you know, there's something that God is doing for them. And we just want to be able to stand in agreement and cover them. Don't wait for us to start praying. If you can pray in the Spirit, start praying in tongues. Because the Bible comes and says, who knows the mind of God best than the Spirit of God? And Mutsa, yes, Prophet Mutsa. Father God, we want to thank you, Lord, for our leaders, God. We want to thank you, Lord, for Apostle Toby, Pastor Nicola, and Prophet Mutsa, God. We thank you, Lord, for the fact that you've called them for this assignment. We thank you, God, that you are anointing them and appointing them in Africa. God, we thank you, God, that you've given them a mandate, God. When the Bible comes and says in Joshua 1, 3, that every single place that they step their foot, that the land shall honour them, the land shall open up for them. So, God, we come and decree, angels shall encamp around them. God, we come and decree that, Lord, every single weapon that's formed against them shall not prosper. That we come and decree destiny help us, that God, people that shall come and be able to sow into their land, sow into the ministry, not just financially, but even as intercessors, even as people who have been able to help and aid. God, we just even thank you for Thomas Toby's life. We thank you for the visionary he is. We thank you, Lord, for the man that he is. God, we say grace, grace, grace. We say encounters, even where he's come from Israel, even where he's traveled to America beyond. God, let all those encounters, all those things that he's been praying for since the beginning of 2024, may he not end 2024 being able to not see certain prophetic words that God he shall be able to go 
to Africa and see the God of Africa. See the God of David around me. God, I thank you for this man of God. God, I thank you for my spiritual mother, Pastor Nicola. I thank you, Lord, for the grace, the grace, the grace, the grace to mother, the grace to pastor, the grace to do all the things. God, we come and decree a spiritual grace for her to be able to impart, to prophesy, even though she's carrying, that God, she's carrying physically, but even spiritually, there's a new dimension for her. God, I thank you for Prophet Mutsa. We thank you for her sacrifice. We thank you for all the things that she's done, organizing this tour, praying, prophesying, where she has been able to put together this tour alongside our, our leaders. God, I thank you for the grace. And God, we come and ask that God, may they have the people that will hold up their arms, even as they pioneer, even as they go greater, even as they go deeper. And I just even feel like God is even saying that even as you go into the land, God is saying that he's going to give you guys favor for philanthropy. God is saying it's time for you guys to rise up light foundation again. And it's going to start even in Africa. God is saying the foundation what you felt like God had even shut God is opening up again for Africa that you're going to walk into a lot of philanthropy that God is going to give you guys ideas for schools, ideas for hospitals. You're going to find a lot of people that you're going to want to sow into and God is going to give you guys the structure and governmental favour for you guys to do philanthropy work. So God I just even decree right now that wherever the enemy may try and block government backing or government divine impartation God we come and say God we partner with your will and we bless them in Jesus name amen and let's give God a round of applause for what he's about to do in Africa praise God praise God hallelujah we want to acknowledge our pastors from like Jamaica who are here as well where are they Did a, they did an amazing, they flew down just to do their marriage retreat yesterday, and I saw them having so much fun. I saw some sin that was happening as well on social media. Between the two of these, they're Jamaican, they were dirty whining yesterday, I saw. I saw on my wife's Instagram page, that was not even on secret friends list, that was public. They were, they, you want more children? Okay, well, it looked like, I don't know if there's going to be more children born. Uh, Pastor Jade and Isaac as well. Were you there this time or did you run this time? Huh? You didn't go. Okay, you've learned your lesson. That's good. We just pray grace over the two of you in Jesus' name. We pray that the work of God in your hands will grow leaps and bounds. We decree greater expanse, greater vision greater occupants in the name of Jesus I command every frustration to move I command every door that God intended to open to be open I decree your Macedonian call in this season in the name of Jesus amen God bless you please give them a big round of applause Thank you, Light London. So today we're done with service. We hope to see you during the week at our various other events and next Sunday. Be loved, believe, be light. God bless you, Light London.